moment for our lives. Jesus ruled majestically. We heard today in the sermon that he came for a purpose. And the purpose was accomplished. Because without him dying, we will not have life. And we will not have it in abundance. And that is the assurance that I have in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter the region, the culture, the tradition, the town, the city, the society that you are living in right now. All that matters is that once we were yet sinners. Romans 1, 5, 8. He said once we were yet sinners. Christ did what? He died for us. What a glorious thing for Christ to die for you and I. Saints, there is no more therefore. No condemnation. Women, no condemnation. Men, no condemnation. Youth, no condemnation. Babies and toddlers, no condemnation. Because Christ has given you back life Amen. that you lost in the time of old. Amen. I am just so excited. I want to go straight into the word, but before I do that today, believe it or not, this great man of God, we truly miss him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our shepherd, our father, the Moses of this house, we thank God for his life. He's ministering somewhere else right now. And I know that that place already is on fire. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When I saw my husband this morning and I said, Pastor, you're looking sharp as ever. Amen. And I said, I want you to go in the name and the might of the Holy Spirit and break bounds that jokes will be broken and bodies will be lifted and deliverance is going to take place. And he looked at me and he said, Honey Pie, you are doing the same. And that's why we are called. We were not made by accident, but we were made together. We were called together to do the work of the master. It doesn't matter if he's here or if he's there, but we are preaching the word of God because the assignment that Jesus gave us is to go into the world and do that which he has called us to do. He told us to start from our Jerusalem. Amen. We should go to the uttermost part of the world to save and deliver souls. We have all been called, not just the pastors. And I thank God for the life of the youth these days. They are truly on fire. They are spreading the word of God like never before. So the, no one is left out. Preach the word of God wherever you go. And let lives be touched. Thank God for the summon for the Sunday school of today. Let the light of Christ be in us. Amen. I've been talking to a woman for the past couple of weeks, months. And you know she realized something. And she brought it to my attention on Thursday, and she said to me, I want to ask you a question. You speak like a Christian, and you, you distinguish yourself in a way that you are so positive, and you are so impacting. And I laughed. And I said, well, I'm, a, I'm just a child of God. And then she said, no, I can guarantee that you're an ordained minister. Because the way you talk, she has never met me. I have not seen her in person. But she always hear when I talk. And every now and then she calls me. She's not my friend. She's just my acquaintance. Somebody that I walk with. And she just called me from nowhere. And she said, I can truly say that you have something that is different. That I've spotted out. And I said, wow. The Bible says in Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Wherever we go, let the light of God shine in us. Amen. Let the light of God radiate in us. Listen, I was somewhere over this weekend. I thank God for the grace, the journey. I cannot believe I can drive four hours stretch and four hours back to another state. And um, when, I, when we got there, myself and my younger daughter and my niece that came with me, thank God. And, you know, both of them were like, yes, we can drive, but we're not going to drive with you, but we're going to accompany and I said, not a problem. And I drove all the way. And you remember when you get to Turnpike, right? New Jersey Turnpike, you start hitting like 55. And then it goes to 65. And I believe I was going on 90. Because I wanted to quickly check in into the hotel so that I can run my meeting on Friday. But I thank God that the journey was so smooth. Friday, I was there. And I ran my meeting. We checked into the hotel. My daughter did what she got to do. I was not there. And later on, we, you know, she came home. 
she came to meet us in the hotel and she was giving us the good news. And then on Saturday as well, I did exactly the same thing. But I was exhausted. But I know that by God, he has strengthened me. He says that we can do all things, right? Through Christ that strengthens us. So on our way back, there was a, there was a huge traffic. And my niece that came with me was going to work last night. And I looked at the distance. The distance was like 241 miles. And I said, how will I be able to get to Long Island or Queens in three hours? And I said, God, you take control. And my niece said, I know the way you drive, auntie. Don't worry. I'm going to be late, but be very careful. But what I wanted to spot out here is that the last session that we attended, you know, when we come into a location, you want to first of all view and scan whoever that is in that room. And we came in, we came in a little bit late, like about five or ten minutes late, and we saw all the people, all the guests, they were all sitting down, and they were just mingling between themselves and just dining, and we just, you know, because we were late, we didn't want nobody to see us, we just took our papers, we ch they checked us in, and we tried to get a seat that is at the very back. Little did I know that somebody spotted us out. The vice president of the college. She, he came to her and he said, Mia, come over my table. Come over with me and sit where I'm, where I'm sitting. I looked and I said, no. 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 He said, no. He wants you to come over. I felt a little bit skeptical because I felt that I was not important. But this gentleman, I never knew who he was. I never knew his status. And he pulled us out. Just because I believe that the Lord God has touched his heart. And he brought us to his table and he started talking. He said, I understand. I said, he, then he started asking and interacting with me. And thank God. I said, Father, thank God that you have not given me the spirit of intimidation, you know. To you to, for you to be timid and I just started a conversation it was like I'm the vice president of this great college this great university have you you know have you thought about bringing your daughter here and there's a lot of things and there's great things here you know it's home away from home you know trying to make it very impressive and I was like wow but for him we are not the only ones in the room we were not the only ones that went to the back and I thought it was just going to bring me. And I said, oh, did you just, they, they cannot feed us. We're three of us. He said, come, I'll make space. I want you to sit on my table that I sit. What a joy. What a honor. And I decree today that it doesn't matter your location. Where, God, where you have been. But the God of Israel will bring you out. In the name of Jesus. Don't look at the left, don't look at the right. My teaching today will be very swift. But I want you to grasp something today. Because God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you. God has a reason why you are here. You are here for a purpose. And that purpose will be accomplished. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So I really thank God for that great honor. I don't take it for granted. Let's bow down our heads and pray. Father, we just want to thank you. We'll bless you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the adoration. Lord, I surrender completely, totally to you this morning. And I ask, oh God, that every flesh may be broken. That I will not be seen, but you alone will be seen, oh God. And life will be transformed. And I ask, oh God, that every obstacle be lifted. Every plans and plots of the enemy be destroyed. I come against every spirit that wanders back and forth in the name of Jesus. And we pray that we have come today to receive, oh God, from your throne. I decrease myself so that you alone can increase. I thank you, Father, and I bless you. Because after everything has been said and done, you God, you God alone will take the glory while the blessings will be ours and the shame will be to the devil because the devil lost the battle over 2,000 years ago when he said it was finished. We thank you, we we'll bless you for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Saints, do you have your Bible and do you have your pen and your notebook with you? And I want you to write down this word, triumph over adversity. 
Hallelujah. Triumphing over adversity. The Lord is lifting you up this hour. Amen. The Lord is lifting you up. Listen, I want you to connect to these prayers. Anytime I pray, I want your amen to be amen. resounding, to be aggressive. I want your amen to go as far as Verrazano Bridge. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Triumphing over adversity. Today you will triumph over every challenges, amen. over every problems. Amen. Over every of your afflictions, anyone that has afflicted you, you will triumph over every pain, every agony, every sicknesses. Uh, in the name of Jesus, what has, what has ever stared in your very face is coming back to smile at you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Saints, I love this topic that I'm about to bring this character in the Bible. This is one character that you are very familiar with. And I'm telling you, anytime I stumble in this, into this character, I get amazed. Because this character did not know what went on in closed doors. Saints, you might not know what goes on in closed doors when they're about to talk and to, like, you know, deliberate about your performance. When they're about to deliberate about your ways. When they're having a meeting concerning you, concerning the application that you have submitted, Concerning your approval, concerning that doors that you're knocking onto, you might not be there. But you know who is there? God is there. Amen. And God will speak on your behalf. Amen. There was once a time that there's a king in Hishra because the, the people demanded for a king and they brought together. And the Lord said, I'm sending Saul to become the king in Hishra. And when Saul reigned in Hishra, there was so much atrocity that was committed. And one thing I loved about God is that God has many plans for us. It doesn't matter if you deviate. It doesn't matter if you fail. But I want you to understand that your journey is different from other people's journey. And when God has brought you here, he has brought you here for a purpose. And he's taking you somewhere. That is why you must always lean unto God and not unto yourselves. Trust God firmly. And this king committed so much atrocity, and he knew that his time is going to be up. Because he reigned with pride, he reigned with jealousy, he reigned with arrogancy. And the Bible says that pride will come before destruction. No matter what you know how to do, do it as unto God. Always trust God. The talent that you and I have was given to us by God. And God gives without measures. Mm -hmm. And then the time came, he dethroned Saul, the king that was chosen by the people. And God said, there is a king after my heart. And God brought up David. Mm -hmm. And during the time before God brought up David, I asked the children one time, I said, who is David's best friend? My nephew, my little nephew, looked at me and said, Mommy, Daddy, I don't think he had a best friend. I said, yes, he did. There will be a close friend, even if it's not a best friend. There will be somebody that you will always share your pain with. There will be somebody that will listen to your agony. And I love my circle because anytime I call, they will listen. I don't need them to talk. Just listen. I can call a younger person, way younger than I am, because I know they're full of knowledge. They are wise. That's why the Bible says we must not despise the day of little beginnings. Let's look around and say, who can I share my pain with? And that was David. And David knew somebody that loves him, that cares for him, a promising king himself. But he deterred everything, and he gave David everything that he had. And that was the person that he called Jonathan. Jonathan was the son of um, Saul, but the very good friend of David. Every now and then that David and Saul planned to kill David, Jonathan will release that secret and say, My father is planning on your behalf to kill you. What a loving friend. What a caring friend. 
But you know one thing about God is that God is a God of principle. If God has decreed, declared that he will bless this great man that is Paul, our shepherd, that blessing goes to his son and to his son's son. That is goes to generation to generation. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Saul was a Jew, but he, he messed up. But the Lord God had already decreed, even though Jonathan had the mind of goodness, of kindness, of compassion, God had already spoken. Because God declares the very end from the beginning. You can be good today, and tomorrow you can be another thing. Be careful. And that is why Paul says that I die and crucify myself daily. Because you're going to triumph over challenges today. You're going to triumph over your doctor's report. Amen. You're going to triumph over principalities and powers. Amen. Amen. There was a time that Jonathan and King Saul went to war. And they died in war. They perished in war. We all know that story. I don't want us to go there. But I want you to go to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9. And in 2 Samuel chapter 9, the preaching of today is that Lord God is triumphing over your adversity. The Lord is lifting you up. He believes and he knows what you are going through. And people on the line, you are triumphing over adversity. Because I know that no weapon form or fashion against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises against you will put into condemnation. He says that many are called, but very few are chosen. You are among the few that God wants to fight the battle. You are among the few that God wants to lift up. You are among the few that God is about to bless. You are among the few that God has opened the book of remembrance up to remember you for good. Hallelujah. So in this verse of the Bible, David had forgotten. Say to your neighbor, I was once forgotten. But God is going to remember you today. Meshibosheth was the grandson of King Saul. When Meshibosheth was born, he was born in the palace. Meshibosheth's father is Jonathan. And when they went to war and they realized that King Saul and Jonathan died in war and they knew that the enemies were coming back for Israel, the nurse that nursed Meshibosheth took Meshibosheth and backed him. I never knew that the Jewish as well back kids. I thought it was only in Africa. Amen. We back kids real good. It's better than rocking a baby. It's better than you just moving back and forth. It's better than you. When you put that baby in the back, they're at peace. They're in the safest location that you can ever think of. Amen. And somebody, you know, manufactured these. When I first saw this in England, I nearly lost my mind. Guess what? There was something like it's called like a buggy carrier, like a baby carrier. Oh, my God. When that baby is like 20 pounds, you better not put that baby in front of your chest. Because you're going to fall down with that baby. But I'll tell you something. A 40 pounds baby can come on your back. Amen. Without you falling. Right? <laughs> what a good way to nurture. That I was nurtured. Amen. And to bring kids. Uh, and people think it was so embarrassing when I go to the amusement parks. Back in the day when my younger baby. When my Hannah yeah. was born. And I said, you know what? Go away, stroller. I'm not ready to stroller anywhere. But I'm ready to carry her in my bag that I can move around. And I know some people were like, looking. I can imagine if I put carries on my back, my granddaughter now. And somebody's like, they're looking. And Abraham will be like, I'm not coming to this store with you. This is so embarrassing. I'm like, what is embarrassing? This is the best secured way that the baby will be held intact without falling. So that's what happened to Meshibosheth. The nurse carried Meshibosheth and Meshibosheth fell. He was not born as lame. He was not born being disabled. But circumstances came along. 
What has circumstances done in your life today? Have you been called blind? Have you been called names? Have you been called barren? Have you been called sick? Have you been called disappointment? Have you been called a disgrace? It doesn't matter what they have called you. Because this guy at five years old lost his feet and he was lame from there. And he was sent to Lodiba. Lodiba means a place that does not grow. Lodiba means a place that is ruthless. A place that is condemned. Lodiba is a place that is behind the city. I don't know where you have been put. Or I don't know where you found yourself. You might find yourself in a pit like Joseph. You might find yourself in a house that Joseph found himself in a terrible state. You might have been in a bad way treated. You might have been maltreated and abused. Growing back then, many people were sexually abused. Many people were physically, emotionally abused. And that has affected their growth. Listen, there are many people that are changing their sex. They are changing their looks uh, because they felt that yes uh, my mother gave birth to me like a woman but I talk like a man I act like a man uh, I want you to bring your senses back right now your mother did not give birth to you your father did not give birth to you God created them male and female you are accountable unto God so he was slain but one day, say to your neighbor, today, 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 you will be remembered. Listen, I read in the name of Jesus. And David said, is there yet? Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. I use this all the time and I'm very, I'm, I'm going to use from the very version that you all understand. One day, David asked, is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake. He summoned a man called Ziba and he said, being one of Saul's servants, are you not Ziba the king? And he asked, yes, I am Ziba, replied. And the king then asked him, is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Listen to that. Show God's kindness to them. And Ziba replied, yes. One of Jonathan's sons is still alive, and he is crippled in both feet. Where is he? The king answered. In Lodiba, the zebras told him, at the home of Micah, the son of Anna. Let me say something. Let's pause right there. David remembered. It's one thing for you to remember to show somebody's kindness. It's another, for you to, it's another thing for you to do it. If you don't take the leap of faith, if you don't take the step of faith, nothing happens. It's one thing for you to see a home, a beautiful home. It's another thing for you to start what? Reacting that you want to get that home. It's one thing for you to see a good man. It's another thing for you to pray and say, God, the Bible says that if I ask, it shall be given. If you don't take that action, you won't get the reaction. Amen. So you have to understand that your action backs it up your faith. Amen. Amen. It's one thing that David remembered in his heart to favor, to show kindness, to show compassion to Jonathan's son. David did not even know that anybody was alive. God instilled it in the heart of David. Listen today. I don't care who, who, who you work for. I don't care where you work. But the Lord will cause whoever that is in charge to remember you to show you kindness, to show you compassion, to show you goodness. I was somewhere on Thursday. I never knew that they had canceled my appointment. I drove there and they said, you can, they cannot see you. I said, oh yes, they can see me. You do not know who is standing in front of you. This is a daughter of the king. This is a royal priesthood. This is the one that sits in the heavenlies. This is the one that God has chosen. And when I looked at that lady, I said, lady, I have an appointment today. I must see this person. I must go into the person. And when they heard me talk, they said, yes, ma'am, go sit down. 
because we do not want you to cause commotion in this office. Amen. Stand up for your rights. Make sure. Stand up for what God has destined for you to be. I, I, my husband always say to me, baby, you do not need to be combative. I said, in this day and generation, this right here got to move forward. This skin right here got to tell them how it is. This skin right here got to say, do you know who I am? I am the son of a king. I am the daughter of a king. And they will say, who is that king? And you will tell them the king of glory. The one who controls the universe. The one that says, stop, and it stops. The one that breathes the breath of life into our nostrils in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. One thing for God to show a man, the next thing is for that man to move. Zebra could have caused commotion. There are many injuries in our pathway. That that's one person that could have said, you know what? None of his children are alive. And the kid will move on. Many people have been stopped for promotion because of one word. But I'm bringing you right now to life. I'm bringing you right now to the word of God. The Bible says in Esther chapter 6, the king could not sleep. King Ahasuerus could not sleep all day. And he said, bring me the book of the Chronicles. Bring it to me and read it out. And they read the book of the Chronicles to the king in Esther chapter 6. And the king said, what was done for this man that saved my life? And they said, nothing. God will press the heart of people to move on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're from Jamaica, from Asia, from TT, Trinidad and Tobago, from Africa. It does not matter. The Lord moves on your behalf. God breaks gender. He breaks gender. He breaks protocol. Uh, listen, when divinity meets humanity, greatness is bound to happen. Greatness is bound to happen. Just be expecting. Because the Bible says the expectation, listen, daughter, the expectation of the righteous will never be cut off. Whenever God speaks, whether you believe it or not, it's none of your own problem. Or it's your problem. Whenever God speaks, he brings it to manifestation. In Isaiah 55, verse 11, it said, This word will not go unto you void, it will not go back. He must accomplish that which he has been sent forth. And David sent Ziba. He said, go now. Bring him here. And they went to bring Meshibosheth. And you know what they say? Ziba did not have to say what he said. What did he say? He said he's crippled. Mm -hmm. And you know what that means? In a palace, there must not be a cripple. There must not be like our flesh in a palace. There must not be. Have you ever seen a crippled president? Oh, but they cannot. They will swap that president right there. But when God is about to fight your battles, it doesn't matter if one eye is gone. It doesn't matter if you're legalized or you're not. You're illegal or illegal. It doesn't matter to God. The Bible says God exalts. And God exalts the humble. He exalts whoever that is humble. And he resists who? He resists the proud. And David said, it doesn't matter. Go get him. Go get him. They, um, Joseph was kept in heat. Then he was sent over to Potiphar. From Potiphar, they lied on Joseph. Right? And from Potiphar, he was sent to jail. And from jail, guess what? They forgot about him. The baker and the butler forgot about you. You might have been forgotten. Your children might have been forgotten. But I'm telling you something. I want you to learn something from this. Learn something from Jonathan. Jonathan's kindness made a way for Moshibu Shet. Jonathan's kindness made a path for Moshibu Shet. You are a parent. Forget about what your father and your mother has done. You be kind. You be kind. Rewrite your history. 
rewrite your destiny because of the life of your generation. Because you know what? As blessings trickle down, so is the curse. Do you realize that I thank God for the life of these great men and women, the leaders in this house? Somebody said something about two weeks ago. It says that the story of the Kennedy paves ways. The Kennedy family. And I'm telling you alone, it's not just the Kennedy. The Obamas will continue to pave way as long as America is alive. The Clintons will always pave ways as long as the Clint as long as the America is alive. But I'm saying to you today, I have never heard about the generation of the Hitlers. The Hitlers? Oh no, you must not, you must not even have a, a, a slight thing about you want to be the Hitler. And that is the same thing that is going to happen to that beast as well. I don't want to mention it because I'm alive. I'm live. <coughs> be very careful the legacy that you want to leave. I didn't hear much about the other children of Jonathan. Neither did I hear about the wives of Jonathan. But I heard about Meshibosheth. In history that we hear about you. Amen. In history that we know about you. Amen. Your names will make way. Amen. Your names will make way. Amen. Because the Lord is with you. Amen. And they opened the book. And they brought Meshibosheth. And you know what David said? Listen. And David said unto him in verse 7. What a powerful verse. Fear not, for I will surely don't be afraid. That is it. David said, I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father. What a way to remember. I've always heard that promise is a what? It's a debt. That can never Please do not promise the little kids something and you don't do it because I do it all the time and I, I ask God for forgiveness. Because every now and then they tell me, Mommy, darling, but you, you told us you're going to buy something and you're not buy, you didn't buy it. In their heart, you're like a blanket liar. But they will not say it out. Don't promise anybody that you want to get them something. Tell them that you will try, even if, you're, if, if it's in your capacity to, be, to do it. David remembered the promise. Since let's remember the promise that we made to the Lord, that we will love him with all our heart. Jesus died for our sins. He rolled on that donkey, and he made a triumphant entry. You know what that means? Triumphantly over your pain. He took upon him. They were cheering him up. They never knew that they were sending him to death. They said, Hosanna, praise God, Pastor Sheila said it. They will tell you, Hosanna, in one hour, before the end of the day, before the sun goes down, they'll be like, crucify him. <coughs> they were not rejoicing for Christ, if you read that scriptures very well. The synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John, why they are called synoptics? Because all their writings are very much alike. They sound the same exact way. The same meaning, but different interpretation. You know what happened? They were saying Hosanna because of one thing. Because of their own pain that they were suffering from the Romans. From the Romans. Oh, please. Hosanna in the highest. We know you're the Messiah. Save us. But as soon as they realized they said, crucify him. They said, crucify him. They will rejoice with you. They will celebrate with you. But deep down, do they really want to be happy for you? I find it so very odd that people don't want to share testimonies. We should. Because you're giving testimony to God. You're praising God for life. For what he has done. And he will do more. Don't keep your testimony. Revelation chapter 12, verse 13 says that we overcame him by the one, by our testimonies and by the blood of the Lamb. And we do not love our lives unto death because we're acknowledging that he is the only one that did it, that did it for us. 
You are triumphing today yeah. over your pain, yeah. over rejection. Yeah. Meshiboshet was rejected. Little did, they, little did he know that acceptance was coming back to him. Wait for your moment. My family member remembered 10 years ago they said that she was not good to become the CFO or the CEO. 10 years ago, she fought it. She went all the way. She has put in 22 years of service, 20, about 20 years of service. And they said, no, you're not good. Because why? Because of that. But she said, I will wait. Job said that even though he slay me, I will yet still trust in him. Because I know that many of the afflictions of the righteous are in some with you today because you are alive. Yeah. You are alive to get back what has been stolen from you. Yeah. You are alive to possess your possession. Yeah. You are alive to take back your victory. Stand on your feet this hour. Begin to rise on your faith. I want you to pray that prayer that I am alive. I am alive. I am alive to conquer my giants. I am alive to possess my possession. I want you to begin to pray that I am alive to see my children's children. I am alive to take back my position. I am alive to be rewarded. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> Listen to this. Listen to this. Why are you afraid? It says, don't be afraid. I intend to show you kindness to you because of the promise your father, Jonathan. And I will give you the property. Mm -mm, that's wrong. He said, and I will give you all the property. Jesus, what a good man. In my town, the king owns all the lands, all the properties. If you build a property that the king likes, the king can say, you know what? I put my seal on it and I take it back. You cannot question it. It's on, it you can't debate it. Can you take a king to court? It's never done. I don't know about other places. It's never, can you take a queen of England to court? Yes. We went to court recently, Prince Andrew, my favorite prince. Prince Andrew is my favorite prince out of the queen's children. I love that man. I just love him. I like his character. He's easy going, but when that scandal came, within him and Epstein, I said, oh, it was my favorite person. What a shame. The king said, I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather's soul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. What does that tell you? Meshibosheth became a next in command to David. David did not say, go and build a beautiful house that you will keep Meshibosheth. He said, I will give. Today is the day of recovery. Amen. Say, I don't know what they have taken away from you. Your dignity might have been stripped away from you. Your honor might have been stripped away from you. Your chances might have been stripped away from you. Your marriage might have been... Listen, many people did not intend to go into the wrong marriage. It was the enemy that took the back door. If you look at divorce rate these days, it's alarming. Alarming. Your marriage might have been taken from you. Your career, where you sit now, might not be where God has given unto you. But I want to, I have a good news for you today. Amen. You will open up your mouth to pray Amen. like never before. Amen. And you will take everything that belongs to you. I want you, the youth, to pray that every man that will come to your life, every woman that will come to your life, it will be ordained by God. Every 
friend that we, you will have, it will be ordained by God. I want you to begin to pray. Pray that prayer right now. It's a day of recovery. It's a day of healing. It's a day of restoration. In the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we decree. Oh God, we declare. We might have lost it by one way or the other. Oh God, we decree today. Open the book of remembrance and remember us for good. In the name of Jesus, we ask of God today. We ask of God this hour that you open the book. Open the book. Open the book. Open the book. Lift us up, oh God. In the name in Jesus' mighty name of prayer. Amen. Listen. The king summoned Saul's servant, Ziba, and said, I have given your master's son everything that belonged to Saul, his family. You and your sons are now servants yes. Oh, yes. to the farmland for him to produce food for your master's asshole for the machine bushes. Your master's grandson will eat. Can you imagine? Ziba was a servant to Saul. He became a servant to Jonathan. A servant to David. Amen. And now, David said, him and his sons, not just him, his entire lineage should pay him tributes all the days of his life. They should cultivate the land. They should plant in that land. They should serve him. They should come to his aid. They should be his chef, his gardener, his cook, his bearer, his baker, anything that you can think of. Because I have given the order. Listen, when God gives order, the order goes forth. The order breaks every prototype. You want to ask the Lord this hour, on my behalf, I want you to speak it. If you can pray, please, jump, lift up your voices and say, every order that has gone forth, that it's against the order of Jehovah God. Let the fire begin to consume it. Shall we begin to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every evil order that has been said, that has gone forth in my life, in my generation, I cancel it, I rebuke it, I reject it. Every evil order, every evil order, every evil order, I punish it, I come against it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every evil order concerning my children, my grandchildren, my future, my generation, my vision, my calling, every evil order, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now you want to decree that every order of God should break protocol. Listen, where did you, where did I say I was on Friday? I was out in another state, right? Listen, sometimes the Bible says that we do not wrestle against who? Flesh and blood. But against principality. Yes. I was a little bit uncomfortable because I was outside of my zone. I thought I would not be able to function even in the corporate world while I was outside of my jurisdiction. But I said to God, I said, Father, I break every territorial spirit in New Jersey, in Pennsylvania, and in Delaware. Because those were the three states I was in. Wherever you go, you will ask that the order of God yes, breaks protocol Amen. on your behalf. Amen. I will listen. God has called you and I to be his ambassador. I don't know about you, but I will never go hungry. Because I know my God is the El Shaddai God. He is more than enough. He is the breast that his milk never goes dry. If you know your God, you'll be able to pray this prayer. Friday, I have four meetings. Very uncomfortable, back to back. You know what I said to God? I said, God, change the order. And you know what happened? There was a major catastrophe in regards to the performance of the service. And my boss canceled the two meetings that I had with you. Jesus. Ah! 
to miracle. Tell the Lord this, I will remember. Meshiboshet was put in Lodiba and he was he was marginalized. He was suppressed. He was left in pain. He was left in agony. He was in a place uh, that no recognition will ever come. Uh, the Lord turned his obstacle to miracle. What a miracle. I don't need earthly miracle, but I need a supernatural miracle. I need a supernatural miracle. There are people in my prayer list uh, that are believing God uh, for wonderful children. There are people on this prayer altar that are believing God uh, for the flesh of their flesh and the bone of their bone. Arise, O oh God. Arise, O oh God. Arise, O oh God. Arise, O oh God. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. Turn things around. 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 In the name of Jesus, we extend this prayers to the ultimate squad. Let God turn every obstacle of this painful world. Turn it to become peaceful. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Begin to pray. We are prayer warriors. We are prayer intercessors. We are prayer. Our prayer ignites fire. The kingdom of God is not by word, but by power. The kingdom of God is not by word, but by power. We are more than conqueror, according to the word of God. In Romans 8, we are more than conqueror. In the name of Jesus, we take back everything that the enemy has stolen and taken from us. Father, we say thank you. Thank you oh, God, we bless you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering. Give the Lord a resounding clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Father, we want to thank you. We bless you. We give.